In the previous exercises, you calculated two new standard errors, one when there was less data, and the other where p-hat was low. The different values that you observed demonstrate some important properties of standard errors. They will increase when n is small, and also when p is close to 0.5. All right, let's move on to an entirely different approach to formulating standard errors. So far, we've estimated them using the computational approach of bootstrapping. There is another method, however, that skips the computation entirely and relies upon an approximation. That approximation is the normal distribution, also known as the bell curve. A useful result in mathematics says that if you have independent observations and a sufficiently large sample size, then p-hat will follow a normal distribution with a known standard deviation. This distribution is called the sampling distribution of p-hat, and it's very similar to the bootstrap distribution and that it captures the variability of our estimate across many possible data sets. This standard deviation formula then can be used to estimate the standard error for use in a confidence interval. When applying this result in practice, it's important to be sure that the assumptions of independence and a large sample aren't wildly off base. To assess independence, you need to consider the method by which the data was collected. A handy rule of thumb to determine if your sample size is large enough is to check that n times p hat and n times 1 minus p hat are both greater than or equal to 10. Okay, let's try our hand at using this shortcut to find the standard error for the proportion of people that were happy. Let's recompute p hat, then ask the number of rows in the GSS 2016 dataset. That's the sample size n. Let's check the rule of thumb to see if our sample size is large enough by multiplying n times p hat and n times 1 minus p hat. This gives 116 and 35, both greater than or equal to 10, so our sample size should be sufficiently large. We also know that the GSS uses random sampling to draw these observations, so it's safe to assume that one person's answer is independent of the next. This all means that the shortcut to calculate the standard error should be a reasonably good approximation. This method gives a value of about 0.034. Okay, that's the approximation approach. How does it compare to our original computational approach using the bootstrap? Well, if we construct the bootstrap distribution for b hat, then summarize it by finding its standard deviation, we estimate a standard error of about 0.032. Those are remarkably similar values. Let's go a step farther and take a look at the shape of this bootstrap distribution. A density plot suggests that it's unimodal and symmetric. Let's add a layer to this plot that contains the normal curve that's centered at p-hat and uses the equation to find the standard deviation. And yes, let's make that curve purple. We see that the normal approximation looks fairly similar to the density curve of our bootstrap distribution. This will be a recurring theme, that when an approximation method exists, it will tend to give a very similar result to the computational method when the assumptions of that approximation are reasonable. All right, now it's your turn to practice.